I want to point out before I make this video that I'm not speaking against all or by any means most antinatalists. I'm referring in particular to uh, what I would call morbid antinatalist or su I suppose authoritarian antinatalist types. People that say that um, the world is a horrible place and the uh, best thing to do is to save us all by pushing the big red button or who say that um, we are going to end up in the near future in some sort of demographic or uh, environmental crisis such that it'll force us into some sort of dictatorship or some sort of authoritarian control over uh, human reproduction. Um, there's a few of them out there. Uh, they've been around for quite a while since uh, Malthus came along, but um, they have their modern day avatars, I suppose. Well, the argument sort of goes that um, we're going to have some sort of massive crisis because of terrorism or environmental uh, degradation or overpopulation or something like this, which is going to result in um, such a crisis that uh, democracy won't be able to withstand it. Now, the interesting thing that I find about that is, is that when you look at the history of democracy, it doesn't have to. Uh, succumb to a threat of, of authoritarianism, even in a crisis situation. The obvious case of that is um, Israel, or if you want to talk about uh, environmental or um, anti-natalist issues, uh, the modern case, uh, the modern example of that is India. Say what you like about India, with all its hellish problems and its overpopulation and its environmental um, practically catastrophic environmental problems, it's still a democracy, and it's a real democracy. Um, you commit a crime in India, you will get a fair trial, and it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, even a political offense, you'll get a fair trial. It, that's hard for a lot of people to understand in the West, but if our society is to, in, here in the West, is suddenly to become like India's society, if we choose to be resilient enough and if we believe strongly enough in democracy, we will remain a democracy. There's no reason why white people can't pull off what, the, what India managed to pull off after all. Um, there's, not, there's no special secret that the Indians have, and they're also proving that there's no special secret that Westerners have when it comes to running a real democracy. India's been a democracy mo more, longer than most um, European countries have been democracies. Um, and um, another thing that I, that I like to point out is if you go down to a, uh, on the south coast of England, uh, just north of Dover, is a place called uh, St. Uh, Saint Margaret's Bay. And there's a car park there where you just get out and you look across the Strait of Dover and there's France. Well, for four years, Great Britain um, was fighting Nazi Germany, Germany for uh, about a year and a half of that. They were fighting it by themselves. Nazi Germany was right there across the Strait of Dover, and whenever um, Hitler felt like it, he sent swarms of planes over to bomb the living daylights out of the British. Um, at no point was there ever a, a threat to British democracy. People don't really think that, don't really, a lot of people don't really like the way that, that modern democracy calls itself a democracy, when in fact it isn't. It's sort of an elected oligarchy. But British democracy carried on not that differently uh, than it had before the war, before the crisis. Um, there's, uh, you're, you're fighting the, the armies of the Third Reich, the Nazi hordes or whatever, and they're right there. You can see where they are right across the, uh, the English Channel. And still, people had the option to vote for city council. They had the option to vote for in the national elections. They had the option to uh, speak against the government. They had the option to do all that sort of thing. There were certain restrictions that took place, but mo mostly the public had faith enough, at least in the integrity of the institutions uh, and the sustainability of their, their democracy, not to panic and not to say that uh, radical measures are going to be necessary to... Um, uh, to deal with the crisis at hand. There's no reason to think that some un, um, unendurable catastrophe is in the immediate future. If, if there is an unendurable catastrophe in the, in the immediate future, there always has been an unendurable catastrophe in the immediate future. If we're living in a dystopian age right now with a very bleak future, well, we were living in a dystopian age a hundred years ago with a very bleak future. We're now living in that future, and it's not really so bad once you get here. It's kind of like aging. When I was 20, I thought that 
my life would be over by the time I was 40. Here I am 47, and I wouldn't go back to being 20 for the world. We will deal with the crises as they develop. We will deal with, um, with uh, catastrophes as they hit us. Um, and the best way to deal with these sorts of things is to not panic, is to not get all paranoid. Um, all the all the demographics uh, people say that world population is going to continue to grow up until the middle of the next century, I believe. It'll level off and then go into a sustained and prolonged, uh, albeit slow, decline after that. Okay, um, what what more do we want? What kind of news do we want? Okay, Asia will get richer and it'll start consuming more resources, but as people get richer, they have fewer kids. So there's always a trade-off there. And as people get richer, they get more politically stable. What ended the, 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 the problems in Northern Ireland? The Catholics and the Protestants suddenly got a little bit wealthier and they had something to lose by continued violence, so they stopped. Um, so I don't see how um, even a paranoid view of the future militates towards a position of um, authoritarian antinatalism. When it comes to soft antinatalism and people who opt not to have kids or say that or discourage others from having kids, wonderful, great idea. We're overpopulated. Let's not uh, stick our heads in the sand over that. But if the people who actually are, are in a position to measure these things are any indication, uh, the problem is going to take care of itself anyway. Um, this isn't really all that Benatarian. It doesn't really get into the harm and asymmetry argument or anything like that. But what I like to deal with is, is a lot of people's objections to the to, to the um, the anti antinatalist argument that says that don't worry, things aren't as bad as you think that they are. Um, comparatively speaking, things are better now than they have ever been in our entire history. We've been around for civilization has been around for four thousand years or whatever, probably longer than that. Um, what more do we want? Um, I think that civilization has created problems. It, 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 civilization will almost certainly solve them. The main thing is we've got to stay on top of them, and so far we have. Um, I don't see any reason to believe or to give greater credence to a bleak future. Um, it's something of a, I suppose, something of an intellectual chic here in North America in particular, I think, to be paranoid and, and worried about the future and convinced that our civilization is on its last legs. But there's really, when you look at it, there's no reason to assume that that's the case. Um, the age that we live in is no more or no less secure than any other age, and it's a darn sight more secure. Probably that's the result of uh, all the worrying that take, takes place is a result of all the increased security. We've got a lot more time on our hands to speculate on how fragile our existence is. It's always been fragile, um, but you can get on with it. You can move on with your life in, in the face of all that fragility and uncertainty. There's no reason to think that we that um, that catastrophe is around the corner and and that our democracies and our way of life is about to be smashed to atoms by some gigantic catastrophe. It could happen, but it it might not as well. Um, whether or not we want to get all worked up about what could or could not happen in a hundred years, well, that's a matter of temperament. It's not a matter of logic or reason or rationality. Thank you.